All right. Let's see. Let's move this over here. Move this over here. All right. Just doing some painting today. So if anybody wants to follow along and see what's going on. Hopefully we got some good sound today. All right, so I finished painting up my horde, green horde guys here. So they're all painted, they're washed now. I've let them dry overnight, so I'm gonna do some dry brushing to finish these guys off and then I will and uh, be able to clear coat them and be done. So I need to do some dry brushing on the backs here of their robes. So I need to get some red. I need some lighter red than what I used. I used uh, this corn red to base them with. So I need to either lighten that up or I need to get one of my lighter reds to dry brush on. So I've got the Scarlet Blood. I think that's going to be too, too light. I think that's going to be too light for my purposes today. So let's see. Do this Warlord Purple. That's probably too purple. Um, let's go ahead. I've got straight up pink. That's going to be too much. Let's go ahead. You know what? Let's take some of this corn red. Let's take some of this corn red and lighten it up with some pink. All right, so I don't need a whole lot, so put this on some of my palette over here. I could lighten it with just some white, but I like to whiten with a little bit of a lighter color than just straight white. So we're going to put some straight up pink, lighten that up a little bit. Okay, that's not bad. On it's almost that's almost a purple. Alright, let's see. And dry brush, I want almost no paint on this brush, hence the name dry brush. Alright, here we go. I'm always a little nervous at this stage. Start flicking very carefully across the grain of the robes. That's actually looking pretty good. Get the edges a little tighter. I'm not very good at the edge highlighting, so I just use dry brush as my backup. I'm trying to be careful not to get onto the silvers and stuff, because then I have to kind of repaint those again. I'm not going to go too heavy there. You can start seeing some highlights on there. Kind of. That looks pretty good. Now the question is, can I hit the top part of this? Just very carefully in between some of the silver armor. Just kind of the corners of these robes sticking out. Get the flared parts. I can go back and hit some of this blood for the blood god. That's what all that splatter is on his mouth. In between his legs, just very carefully. Because it's kind of a pain if I get the pink 
brushed under the green skin it's going to be hard to kind of get rid of that without redoing the whole thing so I want to be just just lightly touch this okay that looks pretty good I like that all right so we're just gonna do that six more times yeah I don't need to put them in the holder straight and I can get about one to two models per dry brush I don't mean I don't need to refill the brush because you're just barely barely hitting the surfaces I'm just trying to be a little controlled going in between and I don't want to get pink on a bunch of the other parts of the model guys turned out pretty good I'm pretty pleased and then I'll go back with brown and do the wrappings around his arms and stuff that will bring out the definition the wrappings probably not gonna do a whole lot with the silver armor I want that kind of a dull color let's see if I get one more before I reload the brush <clears throat> so I did this all day yesterday on Labor Day. It took me the whole day to paint all seven of these fatty models, as they're called, from Green Horde. So it took me all day to base coat, wash, let it dry. I wanted to wet, make sure the wash is completely dry before I dry brush. Otherwise, you start getting some of the wet from the wash spreading around. So I usually let these dry overnight before I... Plus, I just ran out of time yesterday. Oh, I didn't paint any blood for the blood god on this guy. These guys have some scars that I hit with blood for the blood god. So I'll set him off to the side and I'll do that after I'm done here. Alright, let's get a little bit more paint because you're barely using any paint. Again, I don't need to refill. Again, I am not an edge highlighter at all. Whenever I do it, it just looks sloppy. So edge highlighting would take mean take my brush like this, get the paint on it, and just kind of do the sides like this. To me, that's very hard to do. It just doesn't look consistent or even. This way, the brush kind of takes care of that for me, and I'm more than happy with that. I have no problem admitting my limitations and my skills. Ooh, this one's turning out really good. This just helps bring out more definition. Hopefully you can see the difference on camera. Let's see, turn that. Yeah, there we go. It's pretty good. Let's get a little bit more light. There we go. Kind of here's a before and after. Just this final step, kind of really, after washing and making all those deep shadows, this just really helps make them a little bit more pronounced. And I can kind of some just sometimes do this all over and over. You can't, it's almost hard to do too much. All right, that one's done. So this one I actually washed with black the Nuln Oil. These others I did with a red wash. You can see there's quite a bit of difference. I thought it darkened it up too much. But not enough that I wanted to honestly go back and redo it because I knew this could take care of a lot of that. Actually, that's pretty cool. Almost black robes. That's not a bad effect either. 
kind of like that. And I do really hit the edges pretty hard, so I'm hitting this edge pretty heavy with the brush and the tips of everything. Oh, that didn't turn out too bad. But I, yeah, it was a little dark after it dried. I noticed instantly how dark that was, so I decided to do a red, or no, I did not a red wash, I did Agrax, which is a brown wash, which you think brown on red would be horrible, but this one guy told me there's lots of brown in red. I never liked just a straight red wash. It just seems to just not do anything. You don't get the blacks down in there with the red wash. It's just red. Okay, well, that's not bad. Okay, well, this one, kind of uneven with the wash here. So this is the corn red with some pink into it. So I got almost as purple as you can see, almost a purple. And now I just kind of learned whatever base coat I'm using, I have kind of a go-to. I know which color just to add for the highlight that's gonna highlight. Sometimes I'll do a completely different color. Like a lot of times on black, if I'm dry brushing, I go straight for a blue-gray. A glacier blue paint that I think works really good just straight glacier blue it almost is gray when you dry brush it on black it looks like it, it's a good contrast that was just enough paint and I'm always over super careful because if you have too much paint when you do this <clears throat> you can really spread and make a mess so I'm always super careful to make sure it's very dry and very lightly flick it across until I figure out if I've got the right consistency before I get too heavy handed. Again, I am pretty new at this. I've only been doing this about two or three months, so I'm no means an expert. I think I learned a few of these tricks. Dry brushing was one of the first tricks I learned. I'm so glad I stumbled on the video that showed how to do this. I think my second or third model that I did from Hellboy the board game, I learned how to do dry brushing. Some of the videos teach you one tip or technique, not necessarily all the videos teach you everything right away. Okay, so the red dry brush is done. Hit all those high parts of the robes, just make them stand out a little bit more. Okay, so this guy did not get any of my blood for the blood god on his scars. Let's do that now. Take my dry brush. It's always stained a little bit the color that I used last. Wash that out. Okay, so I'm going to do this blood for the blood god. Now this is not just red, but it makes this really glossy red when it dries. You can see on his mouth. It doesn't dry red like normal. It dries like blood. So I really caked that on. Ooh, uh, there we go. So it really is great for blood effects. Super thin brush for this because what I want to do is try and trace these little scars that he has here. Just put a little bit of blood in there. Just I don't want to smear it. Even though blood is messy. I don't want the whole model just to be covered in Blood for the Blood God Red. Oh, that brush is a little bit better. Some of these are really trashed. Shake this up a little bit. Okay. I'm just going to be very fine and delicate. So it's pretty stiff. Let's wet it up a little bit. Okay. And I'm going to trace on here a little bit. Figure out which angle. Mm. Can't get a very fine line with that. Let's, let's 
try something else. Let's try try this one here. This is much thicker brush, but it has a little bit more of a fine point, or at least it did. Let's see if I can get a fine point on this one. Okay, if I'm really light. Twist it around, see if I can bring the brush hairs together. Yeah, I'm not really happy with that either. This one used to have a good tip on it. All right. Let's do the one I did yesterday then. Okay, there we go. I can still get a pretty fine line. All right, so I'm going to be very careful. Yeah, I want some blood in it, but I don't want to just smear it on. Because then the model just looks like I've just... So he's got a whole bunch of these scars. one of the effect that he's been scratched up not necessarily deeply wounded and blood's running everywhere and I didn't even notice my other ones I don't know why did I? oh yeah I did, okay I hit these ones on the leg here and he's got a little pink on his knee so I'm almost testing it before I put the brush completely down And this X on his leg here. If it smears a little bit, it's not a big deal. I just want, want to go. Then he actually has these little, I swear there's bite marks. There's like a half dome circle dots, like somebody bit into them. All right, so yeah, just a little bit of little scars there. Okay. Can't believe I missed that a train. Okay, so next we want to dry brush the brown of his cowl and his wrist and leg bandages. So I used, for that, I used this uh, Morn Fang Brown, just a very deep brown. So let's go ahead and, a lot of times if I do the deep brown, Obviously, this is too white, but a lot of times I'll mix off white into brown. But I also have a khaki. It works pretty good. Where's my khaki? And that's leather brown. Heavy brown. Where's my khaki color? Heavy skin tone. All my bottles look the same sometimes. Flesh wash. I have this big case here of some starter paints that I have. Let's see. There's my khaki. Okay. There we go. So I think this is going to be too, too bright. So let's do like we did. Let's mix a little bit of this base with a little bit of the khaki. I don't, I found. Again, I'm known by means a painter. So all these colors, mix this and this and that. I just, it's a lot of just guesswork. And I've gotten kind of, the lid doesn't want to go in very well. Oh, I've got some dried paint in the corner here. Let's see if we can dig this out with causing a big mess. Like spilling the whole paint. Not that I've ever done that before. All right. So there's that brown. Let's add a little bit of this khaki into it and see. Yeah, because that khaki would be too. I found if I go too bright from one to the next, then it looks really weird. Uh, let's not do that. Let's do this. 
and I'm getting some red in there. Be careful of that. This mixing brush had a little bit of red from a previous mix. still pretty light. Let's get some more of the brown. I need another brush because I don't want to take this mixture and dip it in here. Otherwise that just makes a big mess on the original color. So I want some contrast but I don't want so much that it looks funny. Now this has red on it, but it should be dried enough. Nope, it's not. Okay, I need to clean my water. That's the problem. The water has all that red in it now. <clears throat> so no matter what I do, it's going to be... So no matter what I did, it was going to always have some red in it. All right, so that's clean water. I should probably need to pay. Yeah, there's a bunch of dried blood for the blood gun. You can see it's very sticky. I should probably get another, another paper towel, too. I actually got a paper plate. This works pretty good too. All right, let's load this up. Get rid of almost everything till it's almost no. All right, so now we want to do the arm bands and his leg wraps. Again, on the first one, I'm very cautious. Not I don't know if I've got the right color. I don't want to overdo it because then I kind of have to start over. Perfect. Again, I want to be kind of careful that I'm not brushing. I usually like trying to go across the ridges, but if I do that, I'm going to go across his arm. So in this case, I'm actually going with it so I don't go across his arm. Perfect. Okay. Honestly, I'm not going to try it. <clears throat> Get one or two little swipes in there. Okay, if you can see. Maybe or maybe not. It gives the arm wrappings a little bit more definition. This was the darker one. I think I did black, so it's definitely darker. So this brown show up a little bit more on this one. So we'll go just a little heavier on the brush. Again, try not to brush all over his skin. Because then you have to kind of start the whole... You can't just paint over it and call it good. You have to kind of do the whole process again, so... They don't want to start it all over again. If I get a little bit of brown on the robes, it's not that's not gonna be there. Well, it's gonna be the skin that will stand out if I get brown on the skin. Alright. Just real quick. Doing his booties. And his armband.
probably get all the models with the most one. Oh, that's right, he's got a little brown on there. Let's give him a little brush in the head. Just kind of highlight his head. And I'm not even going to try and get this ripped part down here because that's just going to spread all the way across his... I'm going to get brown all across his chest, so I'm just going to let that go. I'd rather leave it than ruin it and have to do something else and start again. Make sure I get all the parts. A little bit more here on this, on this foot here. Now again, some people would take this with a brush. They take their brush and literally go like this, paint directly on, but to me, I've just never gotten that to look good. So I'm more than happy with just doing some dry brushing. Now again, I might be able to get more control because then I could come in here and hit this because I'm not, again, flapping it over the model, but mine has never looked good, so I am happy just doing the dry brush. Oh, here's the one that was black. So I definitely need a little bit more paint. This one. I'm always careful to start after loading up the paint, the brush, because if it's too wet, then it really smears paint. A lot of times I have to go back and do the uh, wash to calm the paint down that I added. Now the thing is, because of this dark wash that was so black, it does make the highlights stand out even more. It's not a bad look. versus this one that I did with the brown wash. Hmm. Interesting. All right, just a couple more. A little bit on the top of his head. Make the head stand out a little bit. That way it just makes all the black in those deep recesses stand out a little bit more. Makes it a little bit more 3D-ish. to me just as amazing it just makes all the details just after you do the wash which blends it all together makes it look old and rusted and rusty rustic and the dry brush to me just makes that last step just everything really pops out loop it on his itty bitty head just gonna help bring that out a little bit all right, these guys are basically done. I just need to color their bases. I'm probably going to just go straight black on the base. I am definitely not one that's going to put little tufts and grass or stone on there. While that's a cool effect, that's a little bit beyond what I feel like I need to do. So uh, the next step is to let those guys dry. And then I can stain them. Um, I don't think I'm going to do any dry brushing on the armor. A lot of times I'll take the gray hit the armor but these plates I won't be able to hit 
with that without hitting all the red. And I kind of like this, just it, I think it stands out pretty good. I don't think I need to do any dry brushing on the armor. Usually I use my, again, that Arctic, or not Arctic, but Glacier Blue works really good on this gray silver too. But I think I'm just gonna leave that. I think it looks pretty good. I don't want these guys looking too clean either. These guys should be dirty and nasty. All right, so those guys are all done, except the base. I'll do the base later. I'm just gonna again paint the bases up completely black. And then after that, I will spray paint them a satin finish. And those guys will be done. All right, let's put this over here. Right, so let me go get my other group. They've been primed and ready to dry. models for the fatties a lot of similarities I have the robes here again a little bit different armor plating but they still have the plates here the armbands so I'm going to do a lot of the similar stuff with these guys got some skulls here so I'm going to do a lot of the same painting techniques on these because I like to have kind of the these are all fatties so I, I like to have them since they're all kind of the same model I like to have them have the pretty much the same color scheme so let's see how much of this I probably get at least the skin done tonight so let's put this guy in a holder all right so what we're gonna do I'm gonna use the same skin as the last one so they use this orc skin I actually bought this because it's on beside green horde it had a bunch of these in a set for about 20 bucks um, I'm definitely going to use the goblin skin. This is a thin yellow. It's got some crushed skull, which I didn't really need. I've got plenty of skull colors from others. Um, the horde shader, I did not shade the green skin on these other guys. These guys, I did not, I did not shade them at all. I really liked. So a lot of people wondered maybe why I did the gray primer instead of green primer, because if I'm going to paint them green, a green primer would have made it a little bit better. But I found I actually used this, this orc skin. I was painting some of the characters and I wanted some green. I thought I'd give this a try. And on the gray, it worked really good. It's, and especially if I thin it at different levels, I can get some slightly different tint. So I really liked the effect on that. So I went ahead and primed these gray as well. And we're going to use this. Um, I could have gone, I have kind of this almost pistachio color. This is auric flesh. Um, so I had that. Uh, but I decided I really liked the effect of just straight green and then I didn't do the horde shader because I thought that would darken it up too much because this is almost a brown green. So I wanted these guys pretty bright green, almost Hulk colored. And I think it turned out really good. So I did not shade those at all. So I'm going to go the same way with this one. On some of these, I might just try the gray with the shader all together, but again, I want these the same color scheme. So some of the walkers, I might just go straight for the shader. All right, so I need, this brush is already starting to wear out on me, but it's one of the better ones I got right now. I'm gonna go to the store, it looks like I'm buy some more for my base coating. All right, so I'm gonna need a lot of this. So the first model for me is always a little weird because I try and have to figure out where everything is gonna be and then from there I can go pretty quick because I know what's going to be what. All right, so I'm going to keep this pretty thin. So you can see it's pretty thin already. But I'm going to add a fair amount of water to this, or as I go every time I almost every time I apply the brush to the model, I'm going to add a little bit of water. I actually like this really thin because it's it almost is like a contrast paint. And what that is is very watered down paint so that it kind of shades itself as I go. And then if I kind of vary how much I water down, I get slightly different shade effects for each model. So there's a little bit of a little bit of difference. So definitely we got all this back here. So let's go ahead and start here. 
So that's pretty heavy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to spread that around without reapplying the brush. I'm going to go and kind of pull that, grab that without reapplying the brush, or to the paint palette at least. Oh, it's perfect. Okay, and now what that does is because it's kind of thin, it does wash into those scars a little bit deeper. Again, without having to go with a green wash or a black wash, which I, will really darken the skin. And I kind of want this pretty bright. So even letting some of that gray really come through. Okay, so that's kind of, there is a little bit of a rope. Screw that. We're painting right over that little rope that's holding the piece of armor on. And I may or may not even bother to, truthfully when I go back. Those are pretty thin ropes holding that little armor shoulder plate on. I probably will not even try and paint that. Sometimes I found that not painting details actually is better than trying to paint a detail and have it be trash. And again, it's all if one video I watched that taught me how some of this, he's like, just do whatever detail you want. So for example, if I didn't want to do all these plates and just paint them paint them one color, just be happy. He says, just go ahead and be happy with that. Just ah! Just paint whatever details you feel like you can do and whatever feel like you don't. So that kind of took a lot of pressure off me at first. And then I felt when I started feeling more comfortable and how to do things, then I felt a little bit comfortable adding certain things. But that rope is really thin. It's almost indistinguishable, especially once I paint that. So if I try and take a thin line and try and paint like a brown rope on that, it might just spread everywhere and look like crap. So now I'm finally getting some more paint. So I went that whole time without any extra paint, keeping this pretty thin and spreading it pre. All right, so he's got a ripped cowl like the other guy, so that ends right there on his neck. So I'm gonna try and get a little paint of the green down in here so it's not gray, especially since I'm not washing this, which the wash sometimes will fill in little gaps. I need to try and get it in there. Now, if I do get on some of this armor plating, it's okay because this green is so thin and light that I can paint I could paint almost this whole thing and then the silver will easily cover that but there's no sense that was pretty easy just poke in there a little bit all right so every time I go on this one I want to tip put the tip in and spread this around so I do want this fairly thin all right so this is all skin here and his robe is ending right there it's kind of torn up then under his chin a little bit. Now the cool thing is with this blood gods, putting all this, I'm not gonna get really fancy with his mouth because I know I'm just gonna cover and cover it. I did hit their teeth a little bit. Some of them, I completely covered the teeth. Like this guy, I completely covered the teeth, but they're still a little white under there. I did, so I didn't really worry about the mouth at all because I knew I was just gonna smear the blood. I've learned that after I've done a few of these with the blood gods, stuff if I'm going to smear a lot of blood there's no sense painting a lot of other stuff underneath unless I want that stuff to show through a little bit all right so again keeping this pretty thin the nice thing is it's going to flow very easily right up to the edge of his robes without having to get on the robes now the nice thing is is because the robes are going to be red I can get get it on the robes too and that will cover all right let's get under his armpit Make sure that I connect the front and the back. Paint under his arm here. This guy's got a lot of scars. I'm kind of, because it's thin, I can kind of just dab it down and it kind of just runs and it still flows and looks good. I'm really liking the effect of this orc skin. Very thin paint to begin with, and then just kind of deciding how thin I want it in certain areas. And it's a little thick here, so I'm going to pull some of this away. I have to be careful because if it dries too much, it'll actually rip the surface of the paint. Because it's very thin, it flows right up to the lines of everything. One thing about Simon minis is they're very detailed so there's lots of highs and lows so it's easy to find a stopping point it's easy I don't have to worry about straight lines or drawing straight lines because the water or not the water the 
color flows right up to it. Okay, so there's his chest. Let's go ahead and hit his right arm here. Again, I'm keeping this pretty thin. I want some of that gray so you can see it just kind of spreads really thinly because I actually want that gray not to necessarily show through, but I want the lightness of the gray to take effect. I almost thought about doing these white, but white primer for some reason is very hard to find that does not clump. I've had some models be ruined by white primer because they got just fuzzy, grainy, sandy look to them, so I'm very nervous about white. Okay. Again, constantly turning because I find that even, oh yeah, I missed right under his arm there. Okay, let's go over here to his right arm. So we got quite a bit of nice fine line right there. So everything, not that anybody's really watching, I guess. Lame. One of those streamers that has nobody watching. that flow right down to his muscles. Yeah, I'm really pleased with the shade. This color, how this is working for these guys. It does dry a little glossy, but I'm not a bit not afraid of that at all. Okay. So this dips down really low right here. I'm just going to kind of use the brush and just kind of pin it in. Okay, this is kind of hard because his arm is completely in the way. So some of this I'm just kind of pushing the brush in and hoping it hits. If I can't see it, then you guys would not be able to see it, or nobody would be able to see it, so it's not the end of the world. Okay, so the issue is the side of this, technically, are the side of those plates, so I'm just going to come right up to the side of this, and then I'll decide later how much of the silver is going to be over on the sides of that. And because this is so thin, I can just kind of push it in and swash the Swish the brush around and it's going to hit. Okay. All right, let's get his hand. And from this angle, I can see this is missed a little bit here. That's definitely visible. ever going to be painted red so I'm just going to paint that green and we'll pretend that there is not a line from one to the other actually you know what that's going to be a robe that's going to be red that's red there yeah that's going to be red yeah okay so I'm going to stop there because I can repaint that later paint that over with red. That's what I mean. This first time I go through the model, I have to figure out what is what. Or at least make a decision on what is what. What is skin? What is robe? What is a, something else? Yeah, that part of his leg is going to be part of his robe. Yeah, 
just have a thin line there, that'll be all robe. Okay, over here. All right, this is pretty defined, which is his leg over here. Perfect. Up to that skull. Now the skull I do want to avoid because the skull will be pretty much bone white. So that is hard to cover with other. So I want to make sure I don't hit any of that as much as possible or as least as possible. Let's turn this around here a little bit so we can get underneath his knee. I'm kind of just guessing, just kind of pushing it around a little bit. Because from that angle, you're not going to see that. Go a little bit there. Okay, and then just like the others, just the tops of their feet. Just a thin layer. Okay, now for the face, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hit a little bit of green in the eyeball sockets. He is wearing kind of a cowl over his head, which will get repainted brown. And the wash, you know, the wash is going to take care of all that. They're so small. Um, he doesn't have an ear over here. He does have an ear, but I think that's underneath this thing. Or that is my decision that his ear is underneath this cowl. Oh, he's got two heels sticking out. Barely sticking out a little bit of dab of green on the back heel. Perfect. Okay, so this will kind of be my guide as to where all the skin is at. And I'm not going to worry about the mouth because that's going to be pretty much blood red. That'll be robes in between all that. Okay. Alright, so I'm going to use that as kind of my guide. And six more to go. I don't know if I'll get all six tonight, and that's okay. All right, water down. I usually do the same areas each time the same, or in the same order, just because getting pretty thin, spreading it quite a bit before reapplying the brush to the palette and getting more paint. Especially near the top, we can let that top where the light would be hitting on his shoulders be pretty light. Let it get in the scars nice and deep. chest here. Somebody took a big chunk out of him. And that's a little too thin. Let's get let's get a little bit more on that. That's a little too thin. There we go. Yeah I'm almost just treating this as a wash. Just washing his skin with this light green. Instead of painting, thinking of painting, think of it more just washing his skin. Again, it's not, I'm not looking for any like consistency green too. So if there's like really dark splotches, light splotches, that's perfectly fine with me. I'm not trying to get a nice smooth even coat of green. Then you can see this This actually dries pretty dark. So we were pretty close to that. You can see how different that is. It dries pretty dark. This guy I've gone pretty light with though too. I missed a little bit up here on the shoulder plate. And I'll darken that up just a little bit, but that's okay. I'll make it a little splotchy, a little bit more there. Just make sure I haven't missed anything completely. Push a little bit more in between this armor and the cowl, maybe that little spot. Okay, let's do his hands. 
and I'm pretty much applying a tip. I'm going to brush the water every time before I go back to the thing. You can see that runs really pretty wet. And that's kind of what I want. Yeah, you can already see it's darkening out quite a bit when it dries. I like the fact that there's nice raised edges on all these. It makes it so much easier to paint. So I'm going to try and draw a line. And again, if I get a little bit of the light green on other parts, it will be covered very easily by the reds and the browns and the silvers that I'll be doing. So I don't have to be perfectly precise, but I just find that there's no sense going overboard, slopping it everywhere either. It's a little light. Let's get a little bit. All right, this is the weird spot underneath this guy's arm because his arm's right in the way of everything. I am trying to avoid the skulls though because those will be white or an off-white. That will be hard to cover up or harder. Okay, let's get this other hand here. Nobody's watching. Oh well. Just talk to myself. Everybody's gone from the house doing their band stuff. Kids are in band. Wife is the office assistant for the band at their high school so she's there on their nightly practice or when they practice at night she goes to help manage everything and I'm just a lonely guitar teacher for my middle school so I don't see my kids other than just school so, so I a lot of times have the night to myself but it also makes it harder to record game plays like we normally do on this channel my daughter's gone with band. I do have some solo games, but or games that I can play solo, but uh, it's not as fun. So I guess I'm doing this by myself, anyways. Talk to myself the whole time. That's all right. Kids at school already think I'm weird as it is, so just by doing this in the first place. But yet, somehow playing Fortnite and being all obsessed about Fortnite is not weird. Or Roblox or their stuff that they do. Somehow that's not weird. But this is weird. And that's okay. Alright, these guys are going pretty quick with their skin, actually. Blocking this out pretty quick. Alright, let's just see if I've missed any major areas. Under the arms, behind the arms. And since these guys have a lot of the same sculpt or their same body, it's a little easier to know where everything's going to go. Alright, here we are, number three of seven. I did my whole original zombie side Black Plague Army. 75 models in less than a week because I had the whole school summer off so I did like all seven models a day There's seven of each of those models two characters a day from start to finish so this is going to take me a little bit longer so probably with this one this is the green horde expansion I'm probably going to paint this up see if I can sell it as a painted set I mostly just wanted more models to paint without uh, I didn't really know what game to get, so I thought, well, I'll try this. And then I started looking, I'm like, oh, I don't know if I really need more of this on the side. So I'm going to try and paint these up and then sell them. Resell the game as unplayed but yet painted set. We'll see how that goes, see if I can make a couple bucks off of it. 
If not, then I will keep it and we'll play and add it to our set. We will get new scenarios to play, but the models pretty much all work the same. So I could use any models. We'll get new map tiles and so forth, new characters, so we can kind of combine two games, different characters and stuff, and different scenarios, but I don't really know if I need that much Zombicide, to be honest. We'll see. I don't think my paint job sucks, so nobody will buy it, and then I'll cry. And that's fine too. If nobody thinks my paint job is good enough to buy, that's fine too. No bit of belly. Okay. Let's set his hand over here. Actually did stream the other guys yesterday. I had some problems with the audio. I got double audio from my camera and double audio from the laptop I was recording with or streaming with. So I had to delete that. It was not worth putting up. I think I got it straightened out. If not, oh well. It took me two minutes to set up the live stream and go. No editing. Don't have to worry about any of that. So if I lose the footage, it's not the end of the world. Especially since nobody watched me. All right. It was kind of unannounced too, so I don't know if having it announced or planned would have helped people prepare. I just find that sometimes with my own people that I follow that live stream, a lot of times I'm just not available during the live stream times, even if I know about it early. But I really don't want to record this. I just didn't want to record and edit this and whatever. So I just thought if people want to see a little bit how I do this, great. If not, that's fine too. Pretty laid back about it. So it didn't really take me any effort or very little effort to put this up. So now that this guy is dry, you can see this one is quite a bit lighter. So nice little contrast between the two, but still quite a bit darker than what it started with. I thought maybe, maybe what I'd do is take one of these guys from start to finish in a live stream, but that's not very efficient for me. Doing all the same color and then coming back and doing all the same thing is way more efficient. So since most people are not watching or care, I'm going to do what it works out best for me. Just thought I could, thought maybe I'd do one from start to end so people could see how I go from start to end with a model. But... Maybe eventually with all the streams you can see. Like I said, I, I tried to do that yesterday, but I, the stream audio just did not work, so. I kind of missed out. I, I had to delete it. It just, it just didn't sound good. Had double audio. So there's echoes between the two. It's just annoying. Nobody would want to listen or watch that.
So I'll probably do all these greens tonight and then tomorrow. Well, tomorrow I'm not going to have time. The next stream might not be till Saturday again. If I decide to do it at all, see how people maybe go back and watch this. If nobody goes back and watch, we'll see. Okay, oh, well, I've got a leg over here. I need to get this leg. That's three. Number four. And doing these can get a little tedious other, other than doing like characters where they're all unique, they're all different. This can get a little tedious. This guy, I'm not gonna water it at all. It's pretty thin already, but I'm not gonna add any extra water just so we can get a little bit thicker green on this guy. Just for some variety so they're not all exactly the same. So it's a little thicker and I'm going to use the, go to the palette a little bit more, not spread it around nearly as much on this one. So this guy's going to turn out pretty dark when we're done. see it's pretty dark already just for some good variety and skin tones between so this one I'm not watering at all other than just what's there on the palette the I do have this wet palette, so there is some moisture on top of the surface here. Keeps the paints a little bit dry without drying and getting a skin on them as much. Never even knew that existed until I started doing this. So I wanted to darken even more. I could let this dry completely and hit a second coat, but I don't think I want to go quite that dark.
forgot to do the other hand. Got to go in an order here. Just mostly try and do the same parts at the same time on each model, just that ensures that I get everything done. That's the only reason for that. If I start on the same section and work through each section, it just ensures helps me ensure that I got each section done. The last thing I do I like to do is paint being painting the red robes or something, and then come back. Realized I missed a whole arm or a whole leg. It's kind of frustrating. Okay. A little bit of leg showing. Still nobody can. Oops. I smeared that everywhere. some of the robes and one of the skulls. Not the end of the world. quite a bit darker than that one. Well, maybe not that one. Definitely that one that I watered a lot down. Alright. Number four is done. You go over here. Let's grab another one. And start again. Alright, we're going to go back to kind of the watering down here. Forgot on this one. Dip the water before I brush.
got so many, so many scars. I could just paint these all blood for the blood god and call it good. Not even just paint them all red everywhere. I don't have to worry about any other colors. Now that would be lazy. I guess if that's what you would like, that's fine too. Green's going pretty fast base coating this. There's lots of skin on here, big sections of skin. The other has some smaller sections to really deal with and work around to a sl kind of slower approach. gonna go pretty fast so just, you know, this front's gonna be a pain in the butt actually there's not a lot on the front I can skip most of this plating just hit little dots in just dab 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 a little red in there the red took forever on these guys because I had to paint around these plates here paint around these plates the red took forever yesterday I was really bored with the red when I was done in the back. Have that? No, that's a mold. That must be a mold line. There's a little bumps right there. It must be an extra mold line. There's no, like, is there a little rope? No, that's a mold line. Oh well. Toes. And almost forgot these toes. Oh well. 
All right, two more. We'll finish with these for tonight. All right, let's go again. Water down. just to see what effect I get. So I'm really going to spread this thin. just to see if I like the effect. Also just to kind of give again a little bit of variation to everybody. does make where that pools up even darker or more noticeable. Shut up, fridge. Fridge is creaking and popping. Shut up. Disrupting me. almost yellow. We'll see how this dries. I'm not sure if I like this. It's almost yellow. It's not a horrible color, but it's a little off scheme. It's a little bit off brand. These guys have a brand. Too light with the gray primer. We'll see here. Just tell me I have sitting too long. I've been sitting almost an hour without standing up. Fold 
too light over here. Let's add a little bit more. Just a little bit. stand up for just a minute. My watch says I need to stand for a minute every hour. Keep myself lean and trim. I'll pop this guy on. And there's my last one. Uh, grab some water. Where's my water at? somewhere. Everybody's watching my model. I mean, nobody's watching my model. Sit there. Yay. Ting. Hit all my goals. Stand goal achieved. Yay, you did it. Thanks, watch. You're a good motivator. All right, last dude. A little in between dark and light. I need to add a little bit more paint actually just to finish this guy. Which makes eight o'clock here. Perfect. Takes about an hour just to base coat these. Yesterday it was about an hour to do the green, about an hour to do the red, and then everything else went really quickly after that because everything's very small. watch the very first of this I did not dry brush the skin either I didn't want to really do anything with the skin could have dry brushed some of the ridges and the muscles a little bit to define those a little bit but I really liked where it was at so I didn't really shut up water fridge is filling the ice maker it's really loud interrupt me it's so rude Yeah, I didn't, if you noticed, I didn't dry brush the, any of the skin with a lighter green. I have almost a fluorescent green that I usually use for highlighting green. I just did not want to mess with it at all. I was afraid of screwing it up, so I just left it. I was pretty happy with that. Where it already kind of had the contrast already. That's what the dry brushing is to do, is to get some lights and darks, but this pretty much takes care of itself. That just a little bit more. I don't want to overdo it because then it doesn't go back in. The wet palette is nice because I can put the lid on it and it does stay pretty good from for about a week actually. I've come back and used it. So it's a pretty cool little thing. The wet palette means this is all wet. There's a sponge underneath. It keeps your paints wet while you while you paint. 
never even heard of it until I started doing this. I've never seen with all my fantasy crap that I've done over the last almost 40 years. I've never seen any armor plating quite like that. Just straight up plates. Very strange. And this guy's going to be a little bit in between light and dark. Not a problem. do this on Saturday too. It's been a good all around brush, but brushing across these rough surfaces has kind of frayed out the end of it. <laughs> yeah, that hand is a little dark. Let's water this down a little bit. down and pull some of the paint off. Alright, I like that a little bit better. Now that I can kind of predict how dark it's going to dry. Okay, I'm happy with that. Well, the nice thing about, again, these models from this company is they're super detailed, but because there's so many because of the super detail, the really high raised and lowered parts. I really don't, I'm not a very precise painter, but I don't have to be because I can just water that down. It just flows right up to the line and stops. Some other models I've painted don't have very distinct lines and it kind of flows over from one part of the model to the other. So I have to be a little bit more precise with the brushing. Like right here on this knee, I can just push that right up into that armor. Nice crisp clean, clean line. Right across the top of the boot, it just the brush just goes right into the groove of the boot. You're very easily painting. So it looks like it's hard because there's so many details, but because there's so many raised and lowered parts, I can just 
that brush just as long as I'm not forcing it too hard, it just flows right, basically tracing right along the one part to the other. painting any of their face because that's all going to be washed out with blood. Alright, so here's all these guys laid out with slightly different variations of the shading. The green is all blocked in, base coated. See everybody has a slightly different tint. That's one nice thing about hand painting all these, the backs. But they're pretty consistent around the model. Again, a lot of this just depends on how much I dip the brush between each brush or each application of the paint to the model. And then how much water I actually used. So I got some pretty light here. It's kind of really light to really dark. I just like the overall look of this. This orc skin worked pretty good for these guys. All right, so there is the green base coating. So the next step will be to come back with the red, do all the red robes, mostly just the back. The front is mostly just gonna be red right here with a little bit, and I'm just gonna literally poke a little bit of red down in there, and then the rest is gonna be silver plating. And then the armor spikes here will be silver, and then the brown on the wrappings for the wrists and the booties. All right, well, didn't have a lot joined on the stream. That's perfectly fine. Not a very popular channel yet, and that's just fine too. Just something I like to do, post it on the internet. People enjoy it, great. If not, that's great too. Nothing to stress about. But this has been Ryan from No Review Playthrough doing some painting, and I will see you on the next time. Bye-bye.